Um, hello, everyone. Um, so my pleasure today to present um, the work that we published earlier this year on the effectiveness of COVID vaccine to prevent long COVID um, with the data from Norway. Um, can you move the next slide, please? Uh, so this is um, a little bit different compared to other publication that will be presented later during the day because this is referred to the replication of the two study that has been done together with my co um, our colleague in um, UK. So the first one was the effectiveness of COVID vaccine to prevent long COVID symptom with the data from UK, Spain and Estonia. And then this study, um, the main conclusion of that is the a vaccination with any COVID vaccine lead to the reduction of um, the long COVID uh, in the period that we investigated the 90 day to one year by 30% to 50%. And that is consistently seen in um, all three countries. And the next slide, please. Um, and then the second study that was using like similar design and uh, basically also similar data where we look at the thromboembolic and uh, cardiovascular complication. Um, in here, we also see a substantial reduction of risk, um, a little bit more, 50% to 80% in uh, thromboembolic and cardiac events in the acute phase of the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, infection. So this is, um, so the actually the effectiveness was a little bit vary uh, varies between the country, but we we have seen that consistently uh, across the, the the four database in three different countries. So that was the two study that were published, and then um, we have data from Norway, and I really think that it will be great because. The, it has been the long way for us to map the data into OMOP. And then this was really like the first experience that we um, run um, an OMOP study using the ODC tool. Um, next slide, please. And then I wanted to like explain a little bit uh, about the data we have. I think this is really the first presentation that we present the data from Norway. Uh, so Norway is the country with 5.4 million inhabitants. And then um, basically in, in Norway and also in other Nordic country, we have something called the person ID that we use throughout every service and everything that we have. So that's why we have the possibility to link the data from different sources together. So in Norway, we have data from um, the national uh, population registry where we have information on demographic, etc. Uh, we have the data from our patient um, setting with uh, consultation with GP. We have information on secondary care with the Norwegian patient registry where you have the hospitalization consultation with a uh, specialist. We have complete information on the Norwegian prescription database where we have all the dispensation in our patient setting. We have also the data from medical birth registry where we will be able to look at the data related to pregnancy and the birth. Uh, we have data from MSIS, what we call the Norwegian System for Communicable uh, Disease, where we have the notif like the notification from all over the country, uh, like is 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 mandatory to report to this um, database. And then we have data from the Norwegian Vaccination Registry that cover the whole country. So this is not a, a, a sample or a cohort something, it's really a nationwide data. And all the data we have will be linked together with the, like the personal ID that I mentioned earlier. And then those data were trans transferred to us and then we work in a secure environment. Um, and in here we have the data file, can you click on it? And then inside the system we map Thing into OMOP and then we use the script that uh, was created by the two study that I mentioned earlier and then we got the result out that like basically the federated network that we don't need to transfer anything to the study coordinator but uh, we need to adjust a little bit about the script uh, can you move to the next slides so uh, because the in I don't know whether it's the same in, in the US, but in, in, in Europe, at the beginning of the vaccination campaign, uh, because of the limited amount of, of vaccine that was assigned to a country, so the rollout was a little bit different from one country to other to the other. It's also like depend on the decision of each country. So we need to adjust a little bit about the 
age of the patient um, and also so the date uh, of each, each of the study um, enrollment period that we just need to address that in the script. And then after that, we, we apply the script without any other problem. Um, can you move to the next one? And then this slide, I got this from uh, Nuria that I want to explain a little bit about the pipeline that we apply. So basically with the um, outcome, so we look at the vaccination versus with any of the COVID vaccine that was utilized in the beginning of the vaccination campaign. Um, again, the outcome. So we we now will look at the two set of outcome. The first one is the long COVID correspond to the first paper. And the second one is with the cardiac and thromboembolic complication in the second paper. Um, I think maybe it's not a good idea to go a little bit deeper into the definition. You can have a look in, in our paper. Um, and, and for the confounding um, adjustment for the observed one, we use the propensity score a plus overlap weighting method in order to um, account for the um, observed uh, confounders. Uh, and then we assess the balance of the covariate using the standard diamond differences. And for the unobserved one is, is where the negative control, uh, negative control outcomes that the method that utilizes in a lot of live vaccine, COVID vaccine study. Um, and, and, the, and that is like, presented in the script in the two um, report, GitHub report that I put down in the slides. Um, and then we run this script in our data. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? So these are the results out of our study. So basically we were able to include it like nearly 2 uh, million individual uh, vaccinated individual in across all four cohorts. So the first one was the older one, and then moving uh, like the older one, and then you have the one with um, uh, risk for severe COVID-19 and then some underlying condition. Um, and then, yeah, so these are the count that we got for all four cohorts. And then you can move to the next slide. So the first result that we were able to replicate it from the main study that we look at the effectiveness again long COVID. So we we see pretty pretty consistent. Um, you see in the in the left side that was the result from Norway. So we see that in overall, like combining the four cohort, we see that the um, vaccine effectiveness were uh, fifty like 56% um, in preventing the long COVID symptom in the period between three months and one year uh, post-infection. Uh, and then we see some things uh, like similar uh, estimate in other country in here. You see that for the four database and then CPRD Orem, CPRD Gold, CDAP in Spain and uh, Coriva. And then can you move to the next? to the next one. And then in this one, we also see um, the effectiveness, again, the post-COVID um, thromboembolic and cardiovascular complication. Um, and yeah, I was not able to put this a similar figure, but um, it's, it's, I think it's very a little bit from one, um, one database compared to the other, but we see that for in, in the post IQ phase, we see the reduced risk. For example, you see for the, um, Heart failure. Uh, yeah. Can you can you point out the, um, the third one from the bottom up? We see that yeah, the number is really small. Um, so sorry for this, but you you see that we we saw that the we also see something similar to other country in this one. So basically, we were able to replicate the. Um, the fighting that we saw in the three other country. Um, and this is the figure when we look at the older population. And actually in, in Norway, this kind of complication is quite rare, especially for the younger group. Um, can you move to the next one? So with, with this replication, we were able to um, like 
confirm the finding from the two other like previous published study that we found the vaccination with any COVID vaccine reduced the rate of developing long COVID symptoms. And we see that consistently across the cohort in our data. And then secondly, we also see that the vaccination was um, also associated with reduced risk for many of the post COVID thromboembolic and cardiovascular complications during the acute and post acute phase. Um, and then these are con very consistent with what observed before. And then we were able to demonstrate that we can use the federated um, pipeline um, developed by ODC with the data in OMO common model to run the study across the border without transferring the data. So it, it was a really nice experience um, for us to run this study with the help from colleagues. Uh, from UK. Um, and then the last slide, I want to thank my uh, study team to make this happen. Like the team in, in Oxford is um, amazingly uh, designed this study. And then my colleague in, in uh, Norway helping with me with mapping the data into OMOP and running this study. So really highly recommend that if you uh, have the data that fit for purpose, um, and then there was study coming out. Um, it, it's, it's really nice to, to run that and then to 